You got questions, we've got answers. Just ask Kenneth. What's going on everybody? It is Kenan and it is Saturday, which means it's an Ask Camp Kenan video. And uh, we've got some questions for you to uh, be answered. And these questions are always submitted by my friends who are our Patreon supporters. And if you guys want to uh, help support these videos, why don't you head on over to patreon.com slash and find out how you can help us out and also get exclusive content and things that you can't find anywhere else uh, right there at patreon.com slash Okay, let's get to the question. Now I'm gonna kind of wander around as I answer this question. Uh, but yeah, okay, here we go. So this is from Kareem. Uh, what's up, Kareem? How you doing? What's up, Redfoots? Good to see you guys. How's everybody? Hey, yeah, going for a little walk through the uh, water, huh? I love these guys, don't you? Oh, they're awesome. Oh, wait, yeah, I'm supposed to answer Kareem's question. Okay, so Kareem he goes, hey, Cannon. Got a question for you. <laughs> That's why we're here. Uh, it's on everyone's mind, he says. How did you and Tom meet? And how did you and Crocodile Kyle meet? All right, well, Crocodile Kyle and I met uh, well, about five years ago at a reptile show here in Palm Beach. That's how we met. But the, Tom and I actually have a little bit more of an involved and funny story uh, about how we met. Here's Hercules. Hey, Hercs. What's up? Say hello to everybody. Oh, all right, well, this is so cool. I can actually get the question done and uh, continue to just kind of wander around and show you the animals. Okay, so this is funny. So in 2010, I was tapped by NBC Sports to work on their Olympic Games, their coverage of the Olympic Games, the Winter Games. Um, I had actually done the games, uh, the Summer Games in Beijing where I announced BMX racing. Uh, it was the first time BMX racing was actually in the Olympics. And it was kind of an honor for me to do that back then because uh, I got my start with BMX racing. In 1983, Shoreham BMX Racetrack in Long Island, New York. Uh, say hello to Darwin. Uh, that's where I began my BMX racing career. And it was a really fun gig because my mom would always bring me every Sunday morning. And uh, my mom has been like a huge, huge influence on me, as has my father. But it was my mother who got me interested in animals and like nurtured that, that real interest, you know, from a very young age. She was always buying me books on reptiles and dinosaurs and bringing me to the Museum of Natural History and the Bronx Zoo and teaching me how to be kind to uh, animals. Um, so I really just have to shout out moms. Uh, anyhow, um, she would also bring me, uh, she was a good mom. I mean, basically anything I had an interest in, she got behind and she then in turn had a real interest in as well. So I began BMX racing in 1983 and from there I went to BMX freestyle in 1988 because I just liked um, the aspect of not having to worry about a competition. Um, and I just wanted to learn tricks and kind of grow as a bike rider. So I just transferred into that. So back in 2008, uh, I wound up working with NBC Sports for their Olympic Games, for the very first Olympic Games that I've ever done. Prior to that, I had begun working with NBC in 1999. Here's Sophia's pond, by the way. In 1999... I uh, started working with NBC, doing their Gravity Games coverage, all sorts of skateboarding events, surfing events, snowboarding events. So it was really a lot of fun. I was what they would call a color commentator, which meant I was the sport expert. I broke it down and explained to people what was going on in the contest and who the people were and so on. And then after that, I also became something uh, they called a host or a play-by-play -play, uh, commentator, where I set up the color commentator, and I'm the host of the show. Like, hey everybody, welcome to NBC's coverage of The Dutour. When Daniel Dares was a young rider living in Caracas, Venezuela, he would spend hours alone at the skate park perfecting his skills. Now today, he's surrounded by 11 of the best BMX riders in the world, but he's still playing solitaire because he sits atop the leaderboard in the race for the Duke Cup. The bike park finals starts now. And this is, you know, you have that voice and all that nonsense. Uh, hey, look. How about some Oscars? Hey guys, so um, basically, um, you know, I had been working with NBC since 1999 and in 2008 they brought me to the Olympics and I did the Summer Games. Well, I guess I did a good enough job because I then 
got tapped to do some snowboard analysis, which is kind of funny, I gotta be honest. I live in Florida. I'm from New York, it was cold up there, but I hate being cold. This is a true story, you're about to get the real skinny. Uh, how much TV is a joke. So I got tapped to be the snowboard expert for NBC's uh, or Universal Sports coverage of uh, the Olympic Games, right? And man, I don't know much about snowboarding. So it was kind of funny. And this ties into how Tom and I met because Tom is a producer, okay? So Tom actually does a lot of sports broadcasts. Um, let's just check these little guys here. Let's give you guys an update on these little lunatics. There they are, they're still, you know what? I don't even wanna go over there, it sucks because I'm gonna move this cage. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take this cage and move it to where these animals see me more often because the blue iguanas have calmed down, whereas these guys have not. So I'm not happy with that because the male is rubbing his nose. Uh, here's some radiators though for you. So anyway, I get to Vancouver. I kind of, um, I get a call from one of the executive producers of the Olympics and I'm like, hey, we'd like you to be the snowboard analysis, uh, our snowboard expert. So I was like, yeah, all right, sure. I got to be honest, it was a good gig, you know, I basically I read up on snowboarding and, you know, even though I, I'm not a uh, professional snowboarder, um, you can still kind of understand the mindset having been a competitive BMX freestyler because you're on a half pipe, it's you versus yourself. Um, so it's, it's very much an individual, individualistic sport based around tricks and I could understand that. But am I a snowboarder? No, definitely not. I live in Florida, flat and hot and humid. Anyway, I took the gig because gotta get paid, gotta stay in this house. So I get there and we have this big meeting and uh, like a production meeting and I meet Tom and I actually said, uh, hey, are you a production assistant? And he's like, no, I'm the producer of the, of the uh, magazine show. We had like a morning show every morning for the Olympic games. And so what would happen is if there was an event the night before on the main channel, on Universal HD, I'd show up the next day uh, after a snowboard event and I'd break down what happened. Pretty easy job to be honest. But what was funny is I started doing these human interest pieces which were awesome. We'd go out around town in Vancouver. I'd go to the different parties. By the way, how are these lily pads looking, huh? How cool is that? There's some lilies. So uh, you enjoy the scenery while I ramble on about this story. So. Basically, they would send me out now. How old was I? 10 years ago, basically. Um, I was uh, 34, maybe 35 years old, something like that. So uh, still a young lad and uh, wanting to get out there and see, uh, see the parties. I was single at the time. What do you got? Yeah. All right, cool. Does that work? I like to do the Matrix. You ever the see Matrix. that one? Yeah, you know what that is? Oh. Oh. Yeah. He won. So uh, they would send me out and I'd do all these funny little pieces and it worked out really good. Yeah! I just want to thank my mom! But it came time for me to actually do work that I was brought in to do and that was to talk about snowboarding. And so Tom comes up to me in one of the production meetings like, hey, I'm going to need you to come in tomorrow and talk about snowboarding. And uh, I said to him, I was like, oh yeah, no problem. I said, but uh, I gotta let you know something. I don't know shit about snowboarding. <laughs> and he almost had a heart attack because Tom was like, what? He's like, you're my snowboard analyst. Uh, and I was like, yeah, I know, don't worry. I'll, I'll pull it off. But um, how do you like those leopards? They're just enjoying a little hay. Oh, it's always nice to get distracted by reptiles, isn't it, people? So, uh, so yeah, it was just kind of funny because I wind up, um, showing up the next day and turns out I was good at BSing. Being from New York, you gotta learn the art of, uh, of talking. <laughs> and so uh, I wound up um, you know, doing that and it, it went well. And uh, Tom was kind of like, wow, that's crazy. Uh, this this guy's funny, you know. We did all those human interest pieces that were really well received, and uh, you know, I did I did justice to snowboarding because the way I always approached uh, my job at NBC was 
you know, you could talk about anything. I mean, it's television and, and there was an art to communicating certain ideas. Less is more when you're talking in that kind of context when you're an announcer. Um, so uh, basically, I always make the, uh, uh, make the athletes the star and I just kind of did my thing, told the particulars, what they did, little stories about them, um, and that was it. Um, so after the Olympics, you know, we, I had done a good job. Tom and I wound up uh, kind of becoming friends. Uh, and he was like, you know what, what else are you interested in? And I said, well, to be honest, I don't even like sports. Um, I was kind of at the end of my um, life at NBC. Like I had gone as far as I was gonna go. I didn't want to do any football or basketball or any normal sports. I just don't have an interest in it. And I've always been a believer of, you know, you got to be passionate about what you do. And to be perfectly honest, I was losing the passion for sports, uh, action sports and talking about them. And uh, I, I just had done two Olympics and the passion was gone. So Tom asked me, what else do you like? And I was like, man, the one thing that I've always wanted to do was educate and do these nature programs and show people what I've got going on in my backyard. Uh, so Tom, out of all the years in working in television, because I had been working in television since 1998 and always loved reptiles, always kept reptiles, but out of all the years, uh, Tom was the only person, the only producer I met that actually was interested in hearing about what I was doing and he actually flew himself down to the camp and we made a test tape that was called Camp Kennan. Um, we got it sold. We actually had interest from a major uh, cable network. Um, unfortunately, they, you know, we had a problem with uh, the production company. Uh, they were kind of stealing our concept and saying it was theirs and they weren't going to um, compensate us for that. So Tom and I walked away from that and decided to do our YouTube videos. Uh, and honestly, Tom and I's partnership has been just amazing. It's absolutely the most fun I've ever had in my life working with Tom and sharing with you what's going on in my yard. It's been the most rewarding because Tom and I are in charge of this, no one else. Um, we basically get our cues from you guys. We like to try and stay um, you know, honest about our love of these animals and what we're trying to do with them uh, and the education we're trying to bring. And you know, our growth is slow and steady, just like the tortoise and Aesop's fable. Uh, and basically, uh, I couldn't ask for anything more because, you know, I've met so many amazing people. Um, so many interesting people through this show. Greg from Aquascape, Ed from Aquascape, you know, my buddy Fred Grunwald, I've always been friends with him. Glad to share him with you. Uh, you know, we've had Kyle on the show. Um, we've just been uh, able to meet some good people. Some people that aren't so good, uh, but you know, we live and learn. And I share that with you guys so that you can experience my journey in keeping these animals and hopefully learn uh, how to navigate this world and how to do the right thing for your animals because at the end of the day, it is about the animals and what we can provide for them. That's my passion. That has always been my passion since I was a very young lad and my mom was bringing me to the zoos and allowing me to have turtles when I was very young. So that's what I'm trying to impress upon you. You may be the same age as me, but we can still inspire each other. You may be a young person. You may be uh, you know, a young 12-year-old uh, uh, boy or girl that wants to get into this, or even younger, who knows? I just want to show you there is a good way to do things, and usually that way is about being caring and knowledgeable about the animals we love. So that's it. That's how I met Tom and it's been awesome. Tom and I have big plans for the channel. We are in it for the long haul. We would hope that you guys will share these videos. Uh, so many times the YouTube algorithm favors people that are doing crazy things or negative things or clickbaity things and we're not about that. We're about education. So if you want to continue to learn from people that care about animals and try and do the right things, I'm not saying I don't make mistakes, but I'm honest about them. I'm trying to share that with you. Well then share our videos. All right, everybody, we're almost to 500,000 subscribers. Help us get there, help us get to a million because the more powerful we get, the more we can spread our message of education and conservation, then these animals are gonna continue on for infinity. Thanks so much for watching this episode of Ask Camp Ken. It was a special one because 
I think it has a lot to do with uh, inspiring you guys. So great question, Kareem. Thank you so much for asking it. Thanks for your support on Patreon. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We got the Camp Kennan Army channel. I'm talking loud because there's an airplane overhead messing with our sound. But anyway, like and subscribe to both channels, the Camp Kennan Army and the Camp Kennan channel. And don't forget to head on over to Patreon. Uh, Patreon.com slash Camp Kennan. Thank you. We'll see you guys soon. I'll leave you with them too. But today, you're going to finish this almost, it's like a, um, the trilogy the of metallics. That's, that's correct.